Let's do some news. My name is Mike B, aka Phony. Today's date is October 11th, 2019. Time is 3.05 p.m. Pacific. Here. Today, we're going to be talking about China and Blizzard and video games and how they relate to those other things. Hong Kong's going to get mentioned a couple times. So if none of these things interest you for some reason, no, 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 no judgment, you could skip this video. But I highly recommend you stay. Because no one's here to judge. I'm not the morality police. If you don't think that any of these things have any impact whatsoever on how you enjoy your video games, I'm not here to tell you otherwise. I just want you to know what is happening. That's all. Just so that you know. What you choose to do with the information is up to you. Oh yeah, are you kidding me? I, just the fact that I said China in my opening statement pretty much already demonetizes this video. 100%. 100%. So, where do we start? How about we start with a quick-ish TLDR on what's going on in China and Hong, with Hong Kong. All right? Now, I've scripted some of this because it's a lot. So forgive me, but I need to read this one. All right? <gasps> Hong Kong <sighs> is under a special one country, two systems agreement with China for 50 years, starting in 1997 after being under British, British colonial rule for 156 years. Okay? It was a long time. Uh, a couple from Hong Kong, so this is, this is the incident that triggers this whole thing, okay? Fast forward to like recently, might be like six months ago or something. Uh, a couple from Hong Kong travels to, uh, uh, travels to Taiwan uh, and the wife is pregnant. Okay, they go there and he murders her. He comes back to Hong Kong. He confesses to the murder. But because there's no extradition treaty, keep in mind this took place not in Hong Kong, right? Because there's no extradition treaty with Hong Kong, he effectively can get away with it. China took this as an opportunity to push an extradition bill for crimes with punishments exceeding seven years, right? They don't want, they don't want to extradite everybody, okay? If, if you're jaywalking, they're probably not going to yank you off the street and throw you in a concentration camp, unless you're Muslim and jaywalking, in which case, maybe. Um, and instead of striking it down, Hong Kong's leadership voted to suspend it. Hong Kong's government is fairly complicated as it's partially run by a legislative council called LegCo with a substantial number of planted pro-China business representatives. Despite the 1997 agreement stating that all seats on the council will be democratically elected. So if, you're, if, you, if you've missed some of this, basically the UK pretty much owned Hong Kong for a long ass time, which, which meant that their, their rules, their laws, their government style, applied to Hong Kong. Hong Kong is technically part of, of mainland China, right? Territorially. Territorially. Uh, but instead of just throwing Hong Kong to China and saying, here, do what you want, they come up with an agreement and say, hey, we'll give it to you, but you have to give us 50 years. You have to give them 50 years to basically prepare for this kind of transition. Like, this, this is a big deal. These are people that, you know, grew up underneath, under, you know, British law. They can't, can't be, can't be accept, expected to just drop everything and just flip the script and be, you know, part of an authoritarian uh, regime. Uh, it's, it's all British's fault. It's all, always, always on the wrong side. Always on the wrong side of every battle. Um, now, Hong Kong is under treaty until 2047 to maintain basic autonomy, which allows them the right to vote, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of press and assembly. Uh, and Hong Kongers have successfully defended this in both uh, 2003 and 2014, that Occupy movement in 2014. Uh, when China made attempts to pass legislation that would remove some of those freedoms. Now, again, because of the way that their government works with the not, not, not quite so fully elected uh, uh, legislative council, legislative council um, they have to go through them in order to get things approved. And so they're trying to push legislation uh, that is pro-China in Hong Kong, and Hong Kongers don't want anything to do with that shit because in this case, with uh, the extradition treaty, that could give China the authority to basically yank anybody out of Hong Kong pretty much whenever they feel like it. 
Um, and now China has basically declared that it is within their powers to supervise Hong Kong civil servants and their allegiance to China by force if necessary. So that is kind of the pre, this is what happened. Right before we get into all this stuff, because you, you should you should at least understand the basics. There's a lot more. There's a lot more uh, that goes that goes along with this. I highly recommend you go and watch some videos. You know, one of those fancy animation videos that kind of breaks everything down, um, so you can actually see. You know, kind of get a better idea of uh, more of the depth of what's happening in in Hong Kong. So now that you know, um, China, China is pretty much going for the economic victory, right? They're playing Civ, you know what I'm talking about. They're, they're going for the economic victory. Uh, and the way they're doing this is, is essentially through, through influence, right? Through money, okay? Uh, they don't necessarily care long-term, right? Like long-term, like 40 years, 50 years, they don't necessarily care about having influence over you know, westernized company, or countries and whatnot. Right now, they're just basically flexing on everybody because they can and they have the money to do so and they could use this in order to, in order to, uh, they could use this influence uh, in order to, uh, uh, to learn more about industries um, like, you know, movie, you know, movie industry, uh, apps, right? You've heard about IP, I'm sure you guys have heard of IP uh, uh, fraud uh, and, and people, you know, people in China, developers in China basically straight up stealing an entire app idea uh, from someone else in the world and, and, you know, publishing it out there and no one could stop them, right? Because, uh, because of their, um, uh, uh, how they handle copyright law and all that. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, they have a lot of influence kind of across the board um, with a lot of companies because they have a lot of money and they have a lot of people. And if you sell any kind of product, that's a gigantic, uh, a gigantic pool of money you could tap into. So there is a list uh, on GitHub, actually. <laughs> this list has a, is a pretty good breakdown of various instances where a company has basically, you know, flex flex their their uh, their rules or soften their or uh, or uh, you could pretty much say bent the knee to uh, uh, to China over some certain issue, issues, right? Uh, just to kind of just to read a couple here, if I may. Uh, Apple removed a Hong Kong police tracking app from the Hong Kong App Store after pressure from the CCP, and they removed uh, a Taiwan flag emoji in Hong Kong. Now, the Taiwan flag was already removed from China's uh, Apple keyboard uh, or emoji keyboard uh, since 2017. Uh, they just now removed it from Hong Kong and uh, Taiwan. Uh, pretty soon, the world, probably. Um, let me see. Uh, I, Viacom Paramount and the upcoming new Top Gun movie. They removed the Taiwan flag from Maverick's jacket, right? Uh, Gap. Uh, this one was. Mm, uh, let's see. Uh, apologize after T-shirt depicting China without Taiwan was sold at a store in Canada, issuing the statement. Gap and in Gap Incorporated respects uh, China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. We've learned that a Gap brand T-shirt sold in some overseas markets failed to reflect the. Correct map of China in the design. It's a good thing Hawaii doesn't get upset about these kinds of things because, wow, there is so many maps. <laughs> There's so many maps. <laughs> um, I mean, the list pretty much goes on and on. I mean, look at the list of all these airlines. Delisted Taiwan as a country on their website. Delisted. Uh, instead of listing as a province of China. Uh, apologizing after using a map of China that didn't include Taiwan. Uh, <laughs> like all of these apologies. Oh, we're sorry. We're sorry. We're sorry. Uh, it was a fired employee after he liked an online post about Tibet. This is uh, Marriott. Uh, delisted Taiwan as a nation, listed instead as part of China after Chinese Ch Chinese pressure. Released a statement reading: Marriott International respects the sovereignty and territorial integrity of China. Boy, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Uh, we don't support separatist groups that subvert the sovereignty and territorial integrity of China. Separatist groups like. I guess Hong Kong, <laughs> those cra crazy separatists and terrorists, and whatever. Um, so, so there's a list. There's a, there's a pretty significant list of 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 incidents that have happened uh, over the past who knows how long. Uh, where actually, I could tell you exactly who, how long. Let me see. It looks like uh, this list starts at 2016, but doesn't really have anything else added until 2000. Uh, yeah, it's a couple things 2016, and then everything else starts up in 2018 up through now. So. So, uh, recently, as in like, I think over the weekend, uh, the NBA ran to its own problems where a, uh, a general manager, uh, tweeted out his, his support for Hong Kong. And I'm going to play a video that I found that, cause I was going to try to cover a lot of this stuff. Right. Um, but this video in the first minute, this guy breaks this thing down perfectly. Okay. So I'll play this for you guys here. Stop. 
We turn it up. You can hear it. Can you hear it over here? Yes, it can. We'll open this up. Boop. Boop. The meme Saturday night saying stand with Hong Kong, presumably a statement of solidarity with protesters in the Chinese territory. What resulted was a legitimate international incident. The Chinese government immediately denounced the tweet. The Chinese Basketball Association disassociated itself from the Rockets. Rockets owner Tillman Fertitta immediately divorced the team from Maury's comments, but later said he planned to keep Maury as his general manager. Maury also apologized, as did the NBA, and so did James Harden. We apologize, um, you know, you know, we love China. We love, you know, playing there. Uh, they show us the most important love. So, you know, we appreciate them as a fan base and uh, we love everything, you know, they're about and, and, uh, and, you know, we appreciate the support that they give us individually and as an organization. So, uh, you know, we love you. Yeah, I bet you do, buddy. Pablo, many have accused the NBA of censoring Mori for the sort of social statements that is otherwise encouraged. Where does the league go from here? So off the top, it is deeply disturbing that China is pressuring an American business to silence criticism spoken by one of its employees. Truly disturbing. But we need to... Truly disturbing that a Chinese company or any foreign entity can influence an American company to compromise their values. I mean, at least I hope that American company has values that relate to, you know, that support, you know, freedom of press, freedom of speech, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? I would hope that every American-based company would have at least those core values, okay? Uh, but yes, it is crazy that another entity can, can influence you to, to censor yourself uh, under this kind of stuff. This is, this is the influence that China is having over, over companies, right? And that's just the NBA. So that was the whole fiasco. While this was pretty much uh, uh, reached its peak and was kind of on the way down, um, think globally, every voice matters. I know, I know. Uh, um, it's almost like capitalism, uh, in exchange for any kind of, any kind of values. Uh, so while this was happening, there was a Blizzard Hearthstone tournament, uh, that was taking place in, uh, overseas. And the person who won, well, hold on a second. I'll play the video and then I'll read the translation. I'm sure a lot of you guys probably have seen this. Let me turn it down a little bit because I feel like this one might be kind of loud. Alright, so I'll turn this down a little bit. So the guy on the right, his name is Virtual, right? The caster. The uh the guy with the mask on, his name is Blitz Chung. I don't know what the guy on the left is. I uh, I just came across his account just just earlier today, but um Virtual is the one that was pretty much doing all the talking here. So I want I want to go ahead and just uh, uh fill in the translation of what they're saying. So Virtual says, uh, uh this again, this is the final, this is the final interview. This is the guy that won the tournament. Uh, and Virtual says, just say the eight words and we can end the interview here. No need to chat more after that. Is that okay, producer? Right? Because keep in mind, they can see who, they can see him. Obviously, the producers can see him, right? Uh, so they already know what he's going to say, right? He's not just, he's not just wearing a mask for fun, right? Um, and then he says, let's lower our heads. And then Blitzchunk says the words. Um, and uh, uh, the words were, uh, the direct translation of that was, uh, 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 free, god damn, I don't remember the actual, it's written, I have it written in Chinese here. Um, but... When he made he makes a statement basically saying liberate liberate Hong Kong, all right. Uh, he says uh, virtual goes okay. We can come back. Can we come back to us now? Because his head down, right? He has his fucking head down. Uh, and he says, can we? He says, can we come back to us now? Because he doesn't know if they're on camera yet. Uh, and he says, wow, brother Chung, was it too short? Uh, I think that's enough. And they pretty much, they pretty much uh, cut the uh, cut the stream after that. So this clip goes viral. Mitsubishi Motors is loving it. <laughs> they fucking advertising all over the place. Uh, and uh, it, it goes viral and it, um, it causes probably the biggest shitstorm Blizzard has ever had to field. Uh, and also has, uh, has uh, actually had some repercussions on other games, which we'll talk about in a second. So in about 24 hours after this, Blizzard... Um, I would expect they were like hanging out and he told them what he would do if he won. I would expect that there's lots of, uh, of guesses as to what happened because nobody actually knows. Uh, but what I will say 
is that Virtual's Facebook page, uh, he has updated it with a, um, uh, with the, uh, what is it, Every Voice Matters uh, Blizzard uh, statue, you know, placard or whatever they have outside the, outside of uh, the Blizzard HQ. And they, um, so I'm going to assume that, that, that Virtual himself is also for, uh, he's also pro Hong Kong in this scenario. So regardless of whether or not he knew what he was going to say, or they talked about it beforehand or whatever, uh, all that shit is pretty much irrelevant with what we're talking about today. All right. What we're, what we're discussing is Blizzard's actions and what happened following this. Um, so, so, uh, with about 24 hours, actually about 27 hours, I think later, Hearthstone or Blizzard posts a blog post update, basically saying that they have, whoops, it says during the Asia Pacific Grandmasters broadcast over the weekend, there was a competition rule violation during a post-match interview involving Blitz Chung and two casters, which resulted in the removal of the match VOD replay. replay. Yeah, they removed the VOD like right away, which is understandable. They, they, they panicked. Um, Upon further review we, review, we found the action was, has violated the 2019 Hearthstone Grandmasters official competition rules, section 6.1, uh, and, is, uh, and is individual behavior which does not represent Blizzard or Hearthstone esports. And they, they detail below, it says, uh, it says, engaging in any act that, in Blizzard's sole discretion, which is kind of the key phrase here, uh, brings you into public disrepute, uh, off offense a portion or group of the public, or otherwise damages Blizzard's image will result in removal from Grandmasters and reduction of the player's price total to zero dollars. Uh, in addition to other remedies which may be provided under the handbook and Blizzard's website terms. Uh, wait, is there another, is there another, what is this tweet? Probably something I already have, maybe, unless it just came out recently. Oh, okay. Uh, it's a meme. Sorry. <laughs> Save your memes. Save your memes. Um... Now the uh, the page, uh, sorry, the uh, the blog post here is uh, is on comment. Oh, no, no, no comments. All comments have been shut off for this, right? Uh, you could see that this has basically never happened. I saw this here. The, there's actually one over here. Level up your BlizzCon. This is re this refers to another uh, site uh, where they talk about BlizzCon, and there's no comment section here. So uh, that's why that says zero. So pretty much this is the first time, and they also have a new post where they also disable comments. It's because, obviously, they know what the fuck's coming, right? By this point, it's 24 hours later, people are already making a big deal out of this, uh, and when this happens, they already know that shit's gonna hit the fan, so they're not even gonna bother leaving the comments uh, open. Um, that's not to say that Facebook isn't, uh, isn't getting hammered with tons of comments on their official page here. Let's go and pull this up here so you can take a look. Of course, they want me to, I don't know, sign up for a Facebook or something. No, no. I mean, you already saw some of it right there. <laughs> but yeah, their comments are just absolutely flooded uh, here. So this is the reason why they, they turned it off. Okay, so understandable. They don't feel like fielding all of these, uh, uh, all of these memes and shit. Um, coughing can be considered breaking that rule. <laughs> it's, it's whatever it is, it's at their discretion. So, so... They reference the player's guide and they reference the rule book and all that. And so I decided to read it. Uh, I read the entire section that was noted. Uh, I have it here. I'm going to pull up in a second. Um, and I decided to look into the history of Hearthstone uh, banning players for various reasons. Because I wanted to see if there was a trend. Because it does feel like this is uh, a very harsh sentence for somebody, uh, given what they did. Unless, of course, you live in China. Um, one year of being banned and no pay. Now, no pay is very specifically mentioned in the actual, uh, in the actual rules here. They, they quote it here. So the no pay thing, it's like, well, it's in the rules. So not sure if that is legal, as people have been discussing. We're not sure if that's legal, but, but the one year sentence seems a bit over the top. All these things combined feels like, uh, it's a bit over the top. So, Back in 2018, uh, July to November 2018, there was the Hearthstone Global Games. In the Hearthstone Global Games, uh, they basically paired off in teams uh, based off of their country of origin, right? One team got disqualified. This team was disqualified because of, uh, or basically was qualified for win trading. 
Uh, they went traded their way up the top, and then uh, and then they also got busted for uh, for stream sniping during a tournament. They were stream sniping during a tournament, and the stream was on delay, but they still uh, they still did it. Uh, I don't know how they tracked that down or whatever, but all that matters is that they were disqualified for cheating. All right, this is Taiwan. Um, uh, some of the players don't play anymore, but one of the players, Roger, he does. As a matter of fact, uh, after getting busted for cheating and banned from that particular uh, uh, from that uh, that tournament or DQ'd from that tournament. Uh, he went on within within a month and a half to compete in other tournaments, and then he actually won a tournament within uh, what is that? Uh, d -d 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 like about six months or five months from the initial from the initial uh, uh, infraction that he the, he sustained at the uh, the previous uh, games where he was disqualified. Um, so he was not banned for a year. Um, the official ruling, just so you guys can see it, this is the official ruling here. It says, uh, following the Chinese Taipei and uh, versus Singapore match, the Chinese Taipei team uploaded a video of their gameplay upon review of the video and after reviewing in-person statements from the players, the Hearthstone Esports team has determined that members of the Chinese Taipei team used the delayed tournament broadcast to aid them in a decision during the game. This behavior is prohibited in our tournament rules under Section 7.11a. Specifically, players are prohibited from stream sniping or any general attempt to play by a player to spectate this, uh, his or her own match to get information from another person spectating the match. So they were banned for uh, stream sniping. No, there was no carryover or anything. So I decided to go look at the rules to see exactly what the Hearthstone rules and policies uh, actually uh, state when it comes to uh, enforcing, uh, how they enforce, and then what they do in terms of uh, repercussions. Uh, I don't know how long the delay was, uh, Frosty. This, this, was, this, was, this was last year, so I'm not quite sure how long the delay was. So they have this fancy page right here that I found that uh, uh, after, after this incident and a couple other incidents, incidents, the incidences, uh, they, they opted to start being a little more transparent with how they handle rules and, and, also, and also log their, their rule changes and everything. So what's nice is like this site basically, it's kind of like patch notes for, for their rules. And so I went through this and I found their actual current rules. And with this, we'll go to page 10. Section 6.1, see 10, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, rule book patch. No, oh, dude. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is. But it's good, right? Because you want to know what changed instead of rereading the entire thing to make sure that you're not going to break any kind of rules. Uh, so prize deductions and standards of conduct. So I'll just read like the first line from every other one here so you kind of get a gist of what, what it's like, you know, what the rules are and what the repercussions are, right? And so these are basically things that you do wrong and how much we're going to take from you. So Grandmaster, Grandmaster players will be held to the highest standards of personal integrity and good sportsmanship. Uh, Grandmaster's players, Grandmaster players are bound by the standards of player conduct outlined in Section 6 of the Handbook, which is another thing we're going to pull up in a second, uh, and the rule infractions and penalties outlined in Section 7 of the Handbook. Uh, in addition to the foregoing, the following conduct will, re will reduce Grandmaster player price totals by the following amounts. Price totals cannot be reduced below zero. <laughs> there's no negative pri prize amounts. So that means there's no penalties like they have in other sporting events. Uh, all prize dedu deductions will be decided by uh, in Blizzard's sole discretion and are final and binding once communicated to the player receiving the deduction. So, <clears throat> sponsorship violation, $500. Uh, that's if you have a sponsor that you didn't clear through Blizzard. Uh, a player found to be a violation of streaming blackout periods described in section 7.1, $500. Uh, battle, battle.net account with another, sharing a battle.net account with somebody else, $1,000. Uh, see, uh, account boosting, uh, $1,000. So, basically, it's like $1,500, right? Just, just, they're just taking a little bit of money here, and they're kind of chipping away a little bit. Um, let me see. Uh, then down here, this is right here. It says, Grandmasters players, we found a violation of this part of the rulebook, unsporting conduct, uh, minor, in addition to the penalty described in the handbook. We'll have the following amounts deducted from the prize pool. $250 for the first instance by the same player, $500 for the second, $1,000 for the third. Uh, and it just, you know, I think it just keeps going. A reduction of the player's prize to $0 of the fourth instance. That's right. So down to zero for the fourth one. Um, and it says that uh, and here in O, this is the one that's mentioned in the uh, uh, in the reason why they, uh, at the end of every every section of, of when you talk about like legal stuff and legal speak, they always have like a catch-all. It's kind of like, here's all the things that we could really detail, but there's always going to be something that's going to fall out, out of this. Like it's not really going to fall into any of these categories. And so we need a section to kind of cover all, and that's what this is. Engaging in any act that at Blizzard Soldiers, in Blizzard Soul Discretion, uh, brings you into public disrepute, disrepute, and blah, 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 blah. We've read this part already. So now let's go over to the player handbook to see how they, uh, how they expect players to, to act, and also uh, uh, how, how infractions are actually tallied, okay? And this is going to be on page 21, 6.3. Oh my god. 21. Is there a way to get faster? Faster. Faster. So 10, 
11, 12, 21. You can't, I don't think you can bookmark pages. Otherwise, it's been a lot easier. All right, so 21. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, unethical kind of harassment, right? Did I get the right page? Sorry. <laughs> 6.3, 6.3. Uh, illegal and, uh, no, 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 no. Shit, I think I got my stuff mixed up here. Mmm, let's see. The player may not any turn to commit any act, we call it all these situation that brings him a public dispute. Oh, this is, yeah, okay, this is the, uh, this is basically reiterating what section O of the, or section 6 one uh, subsection O of the other page, uh, of the other book was detailing, which is, uh, don't, don't do anything that's gonna embarrass the family, kind of thing. Um, let me see. Let me go down to 30, page 30. Man, there's so many rules. You guys got to read all these things. It takes forever. Uh, let's see, page 30. And this is uh, 7.11. Did I get it? Yes, I did. Cheating. Okay. Okay. So, cheating. Control F. I know, but there's so many mentions of things I'm looking for. Uh, let's see, players must compete to the best of their ability at all times. Try not to break tournament, pl tournament or player handbook rules or omit information from tournament officials in order to try to gain advantage. Basically says don't cheat. Stream sniping right there. Boom. That's what they got. That's what the the previous instance uh, what they got uh, uh, What they got in trouble for and what they did not get a ban for so I'm trying to figure out like why didn't they get a ban if this guy said something about there being a uh, 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 Hold on a second about there being a ban. I'm sorry if this if Blitz Chong got banned Why didn't this other guy get banned for straight-up cheating? So one moment here. Let me see if I could find the, uh, the Thing here we go I Guess I am gonna use that that search this search thing. So when tournament organizers observe infractions in tournaments, they will address the infraction with the player. This could basically include everything, right? So the first infraction is a warning. The second infraction is a game loss. The third one is a match loss. And the fourth one is disqualification, all right? So there's four steps, right? Warning, game loss, match loss, disqualification, all right? This, it's a process, right? It's basically due process for players. Uh, it gives them an opportunity to correct their mistakes and everything before they, keep, before they, before they, make, before they lose money, basically. Uh, and it says penalties in the same tournament for the same category of infractions escalate for each successive infraction Tournament officials will use the following escalation path warning game loss match loss disqualification And then it says uh, right here, and this is important infraction escalations do not carry over from tournament to tournament The above penalties do not carry over from one tournament to the next tournament and their previous actions on how they've enforced bans in the past for like well like the example I gave you has shown that the person will lose whatever they have they'll get disqualified from whatever that tournament is but then they're still allowed to participate in future tournaments this is the first time that somebody is banned from a from from a, a tournament and they're banned for a year instead of just that one even in their own rule book it says that the penalties do not care over from one tournament to the next so that to me is very questionable behavior on Blizzard's part in terms of how they decided to enforce this. It's, it makes it feel like it's a bit over the top. Like it was unnecessary to ban it for an entire year. And it really makes it, seem, really makes it look like they're kissing China's ass. <sighs> so of course, there is just nothing but media, uh, media and political backlash everywhere. Vox is talking about it. Uh, one of America's biggest gaming companies is acting as China's censor. ESPN says Blizzard suspends Hearthstone player Blitz Chung after vocalizing support for anti-government Hong Kong protesters during, during a post-game interview. Then, of course, there was the, uh, the now famous South Park banned in China, which got them banned in China. <laughs> and, of course, I'm sure you guys, somebody already linked it earlier. Their response for getting banned in China, they said, uh, official apology to China from Trey Parker and Matt Stone, creators of uh, South Park, if you're not familiar. Uh, like the NBA, we welcome the Chinese censors into our homes and into our hearts. We too love money more than freedom and democracy. C does not look just like Winnie the Pooh at all. Tune into our 300th episode this Wednesday at 10, where they said, fuck China. Uh, long live the great communist party of China. May this autumn's sor sorghum har harvest be bountiful. We good now, China? Uh, okay, is there another response? What is this? Let's pull this over. I didn't see this one. Nope. Oh, it's so we gotta give. Okay, say no more sound to the Chinese. Then say it. Say fuck the Chinese government. <laughs> fuck the Chinese government. This is the clip from the uh, from the thing. Yeah. Uh, so yes, yes, and somebody got banned. Yes, somebody got banned for liking a tweet. Yeah, it just it's endless. It's endless. Uh, so, 
Blizzard, Blizzard employees staged a walkout. I'm sure you guys all uh, saw they covered up the uh, Think Globally and Every Voice Matters uh, values on the, the orc statue that they have out front. Uh, is there another picture underneath? No, it doesn't look like it. Um, uh, so just, just little things, little things, little, little rumblings and such. And this was early on in the day. And then uh, later on, if I'm, I'm missing my, uh, uh, my, my location here, here we go. Uh, later on, a few Blizz employees, a couple dozen uh, Blizz employees actually staged a walkout. Uh, basically expressing their, their distaste for, uh, discontent with Blizzard's decision. Um, there have been countless folks that have been, uh, uh, canceling their WoW subscriptions because that's the, the most direct way that a lot of people can actually impact or have an impact on this. I did it myself. I, I did, I, I, uh, uh, I canceled my WoW subscription, um, almost immediately. And, uh, I uninstalled all that shit because it just felt dirty. It just felt dirty. Like the shit that they were doing just really felt dirty. And so I couldn't, I just couldn't. And yes, I'm very glad that Destiny 2 is on Steam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm sure Bungie's, Bungie's probably just like, woo! R slash uh, Blizzard is a fucking disaster. If you guys have been there at all, it's just an absolute disaster. It's nothing, nothing but, nothing but memes. They actually shut it down for a period of time uh, after the announcement, announcement was made because it was just getting bombarded. Uh, we have actual politicians speaking up. Uh, and I'll read a quote here. And I know that you, you, some of you guys know who this person is and you probably have your opinions about him, which is fine. But let's talk about the quotes here, okay? So this is a quote from uh, uh, Ron Wyden, which I believe, is he the one that had something to do with the loot box fiasco thing? Oh, maybe not. Uh, so it says, Blizzard shows it is willing to humili humiliate itself to please the Chinese Communist Party. No American company should censor calls for freedom to make a quick buck. And then Senator Marco Rubio says, recognize what's happening here. People who don't live in China must either self-censor or face dismissal and suspensions. China's at using access to market as leverage to crush free speech globally. Implications of this will be felt long after everyone in U.S. politics today is gone. Uh, let me catch up on chat here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, bipartisan. Dude, I have never seen a gaming-related anything unify so many people that previously were at each other's throats. Like, I'm not even kidding. This is the most, this is the most unifying thing to happen this decade, for fuck's sake. Uh, let's see. There's more. There's more. Uh, we have casters that have actually, uh, stepped down because of this. Um, uh, this is, um, Brian Kibler. And I actually read his, uh, his statement here. He actually has on his Twitter account. Let me go. Did it. So he says, I certainly never, well, I don't read the whole thing. Okay. Okay. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but he basically, <laughs> <laughs> he he basically states that he is uh, uh he he is just does not approve of the actions that Blizzard has taken. Uh and there's actually a couple other casters that have stepped down and uh, uh because of because of the actions that Blizzard has uh, has taken against Blitzchunk. <sighs> uh let's see. The moderator of R slash Hearthstone also stepped down. He's moderator for four years. After four years of being a moderator for the sub and an advocate for this game, I am leaving the moderation team as this is no longer a company I want to support or follow. I appreciate the community and my time spent with y'all. Good luck, Blizzard. Uh, even... Uh, you guys follow uh, Overwatch League? So, Jane, who is the assistant coach for Dallas Fuel, he posted this tweet. He says, while I recognize the right... Let me zoom this in a little bit here. While I recognize the right that Blizzard Entertainment has to enforce their rules and standards on competitors such as Blitzchung uh, HS, I condemn the censorship and severity of consequences. The severity of consequences! That's the most important part here! Uh, uh, brought against an, an individual who was campaigning for a human rights social movement. This tweet has since been deleted, and he has confirmed that he was instructed to delete this tweet. This is Jane's personal Twitter account. And somebody told him that he had to delete this tweet. Ah. <sighs> By the way, Tim Sweeney says that this shit will never happen under his watch. He says, uh, uh, he says right here, he says, so if t says free Hong Kong in a post-game interview, you wouldn't do anything. He said, exactly. Tim Sweeney is, uh, uh, he's five Epic Games. I'm pleased you guys know he is. Uh, uh, he says, I thought company had a majority investor from Chinese, from the Chinese. Surely it would just end up in a similar situation. Investor pulls out a big chunk of cash flow. It's not the right decision to make, but I'm sure it puts any company on the edge. It's Epic is a U.S. company and I'm the controlling shareholder. Tencent is approximately a 40% shareholder, and there are uh, many other shareholders, including employees and investors. 
Is it forty percent? Is a big cut though. Mm, no, no. And he says, uh, and he says, can you really say that you would not let this happen? He said, yes, absolutely. That will never happen on my watch as the founder, CEO, and controlling shareholder. Now, this could you know, this this is this is just Tim Sweeney's just basically saying this, and it looks good, but we don't really know, right? We don't really know. Um, delete this YouTube video. Uh, <laughs> Uh, what is this blizzard distress at work? Uh, is it 10 11? Is this new? Hold on a second. This has got a new date on it. Let me pull it up here. This is just shit still unfolding. Blizzard won't punch. Yeah, okay, okay. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. As a matter of fact, that's the next part of this right here. Uh, so the best thing to come out of this is gamers have calmed the fuck down about Epic. <laughs> Let me tell you, Epic's looking pretty fucking good right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's, I, some people are, some people are having, um, uh, issues with, with the whole like let's let's punish you know uh, uh, World of Warcraft by or Blizzard by unsubscribing to World of Warcraft because they can't really see an end to it they don't they look at it and they say um, well I don't want to unsub because I like the game and and you also I don't know how long I'm going to be unsub for if I if I do this for the purpose of protesting uh, uh, against Blizzard for what they've done uh, with you know siding with China on this issue. Um, just come up with if you're if you're looking for a re if you if you want to. Uh, punish Blizzard, make a make a statement, whatever you want to call it. Just set a goal. Just say, you know what? I just won't play. I just won't pay for a while sub for like three months or whatever. For me, my goal for for Epic Game Store is uh, uh is I just want them to have the features that they that that would make them competitive in the market. I would like them to not pay for exclusives. But if I if I was mad at everyone that paid for exclusives, that I wouldn't I wouldn't be playing. I would never play Xbox or PlayStation games. Um. But feature matching, please, for fuck's sake, please give us some fucking features. And they have been very fucking slowly rolling out features. So maybe next year or something, when they get all their features rolled out, then we'll go and jump back in there. So set a goal. Set a goal. You know what? I'm not saying ban it forever, right? I'm not saying ban the shit forever. What? Total Biscuit, uh, he banned Sega for like years. He wouldn't cover Sega shit forever. Uh, and even he finally eventually said, you know what? Like that time has passed. It's time to, you know, basically let bygones be bygones. Um, and by I think he was still kind of like, but still fuck you, Sega. <laughs> But, but yeah, so just set a goal for yourself. It doesn't have to be forever. It doesn't have to be forever. All right. Just enough for you to make your statement clear and then you can move on uh, and go back to doing whatever you want to do. So going back to the Hearthstone stuff, because, uh, because this is now a global thing that everybody's talking about and the memes are out of fucking control at another, at another Hearthstone event. Uh, this is a collegiate tournament that they had uh, just a few days ago. There was, <laughs> and this is kind of funny, uh, I, one of the teams, one of the teams held up a sign that says, and I'll show Game it to you. Over. That it is. The suspense won't last any longer. It says, free Hong, free Hong Kong boycott Blizz. And then it cuts real quick. These guys obviously and saw it, and they're, <laughs> they don't know how to react. And then they uh, eventually cut, but uh, Twitter buffering is fucking ridiculous. Um, I love they cut back to the casters for just a second and you got this look on this guy's face. He's kind of like, oh shit. Um, so pretty much everywhere, everybody knows about it. They, there's, there's tournaments coming up. Uh, there's tournaments coming up. You see this guy smiling like, they, yeah, they, they saw it. It's not like they didn't see it. Uh, and they're going to try to do their best just to ignore it and keep moving on. But it's everywhere. Uh, we have tournaments coming up. We're, you know, Worlds is coming up this weekend. As a matter of fact, uh, the BlizzCon, BlizzCon is coming up. That's going to be a shit show. Uh, yeah, there's, 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 there are public events that are going to be happening, and people and everybody knows about this. So shit's going to be happening left and right. Uh, we're going to see little instances of uh, uh, of resistance uh, all over the place. Uh, people were holding up signs. Uh, they were holding up uh, 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 free Hong Kong signs at ba uh, basketball games, and then in some cases, some uh, they actually had their signs. Uh, taken and uh, they were uh, I guess in this case they were removed uh, and in another case there's another video where they were um, uh, They had a couple signs and uh, it said Google and I can't pronounce the word but it said Google U Y G H U R S which if you're not sure what that is it is the uh, It's supposed to, supposedly the, the location of the uh, or not supposedly but it's the location of the uh, um, the concentration camps located in China that they discovered recently and one of the reasons why uh, President Trump and others were slapping um, uh, bans on travel visas and such uh, to the uh, Chinese government and really pissing them off. Ah, oh, man. Um, you guys have phones on human rights? I know, I know. Let's try to force the hand of companies to punish political statements and absolutely nothing to help the Hong Kong situation. It's, it's a mess. This whole thing's a mess. So, 
Let me see. Let me see. And just just on that note, when it comes to uh, NBA um, saying that they don't support protesters at uh, at their events, uh, we should remember that that is not true. Unless there's a reason rule, that is not true. Uh, or an ethnic group. Uh, oh, really? When I Googled it, well, you know what? When I Googled it, it led me to the location. I've been knee deep in, in, in Google translating Chinese shit all fucking morning. So I, if, I'm sorry if I mix some shit up. But, um, but yeah. yeah, I've been knee deep in fucking <laughs> multiple layers of translation. Uh, I actually was tempted to go and talk to my neighbors and shit, but I don't want them to, to like, because it's highly, highly unlikely that they're going to be like, oh, yeah, pro Hong Kong, which maybe, I don't know, but that's a risk I don't want to take. Um, anyway, so, uh, uh, Back in the Overwatch world, May, as you've already seen, has been turned into a Hong Kong uh, mascot with the goal, the goal was to make her so popular as a mascot of, uh, a representative of uh, Hong Kong, uh, supporting Hong Kong's independence of, uh, uh, of China. They, they want China to basically, or force Blizzard to uh, make some kind of move to to either remove May or make uh, China say, hey, you know what? We can't have May representing Hong Kong, so we're going to remove the game from, you know, from our platforms or whatever. Like, that's the goal. I don't know if it's going to happen, but that's the goal. And the first step of that goal of actually getting May into the actual Hong Kong protests, which are happening right now, uh, like literally, literally right now, uh, it works. Uh, so yeah, there are actual uh, signs that made it uh, overseas, right there. It says, uh, free Hong Kong, five demands, not one less. And she has her umbrella for the umbrella movement. And it's, uh, and yeah, look, at May, May is fighting for her rights. I love, I love it because I, I saw these pictures, and I love that you actually now get to see them in action. So it's great. It's great. Um, whoop. That mouse point. What? 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 Uh, let's see. I was going to ban NBA from playing in the States. Oh, you guys have another conversation. I can't wait for Hong Kong skins to come in Overwatch. <laughs> I know, that's, that's a joke. There's some, you know what's funny too? Uh, I mean, it's a shame. It's a shame that we have this kind of uh, uh, censorship that's going on with Hong Kong because some of the skins that people were coming up with for May were pretty fucking good. <laughs> like, they were really good. Uh, just not necessarily compatible with, uh, with Blizzard's values, Blizzard's Chinese values. Um, so there has been an impact on other games. Right, uh, and I, 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 I totally understand why people would, as a caster, why people would like you know uh, second guess what they're saying, what they're doing, in fear that they might that they might just get axed because Blizzard did remove Blitzchung and those two casters. Right again, just like that. Okay, the casters didn't technically say anything. We don't know if they're, they were uh, complicit in the whole thing. Uh, uh, they, they didn't cheer them on or anything like that. In that clip, we don't have the entire VOD to compare and see. Uh, there's lots of assumptions based off of what happened outside of that 30-second VOD. We don't know what the actual truth is. But uh, we do know that they were gone. The two, they were in on it. It was set up. And it was set up. Zell just knows this for a fact. So, like I said, nobody knows. <laughs> nobody knows for sure. Again, like I said at the beginning, we know that Virtual, the guy on the right in the video, the caster on the right, did say, uh, or he, 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 he is pro Hong Kong. So we could assume that he was not going to go out of his way to stop, stop the, uh, stop the uh, Blitzchunk from making a statement. Uh, we also know that there were producers who saw that feed and put the feed on with him wearing the gas mask. So either producers had absolutely no fucking clue what that signified. Uh, uh, what that represented, represented, or they just, I don't know, they just, they, they were equally as complicit as the casters, but I didn't, um, I didn't, uh, uh, you know, we didn't hear about them getting fired. So anyway, so there have been waves, uh, scooting off into the far reaches of the game reverse, uh, where other, other, um, what is this? Oh, the, say the eight words. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I will happily do that. Uh, so say the eight words. Yes, he's wearing a gas mask. Guys, guys. He's wearing a fucking gas mask and goggles. They're like 40 feet from Hong Kong where they are fighting these fucking rules. Of say, they're trying to impose rules to say they can't wear gas mask. They can't wear masks or anything to cover the face uh, during protests. I feel like they saw him wear the mask and they knew what eight words he was going to say. They knew what he was going to say. 
So. So. Are we good? Are we good? I think we should all agree that we don't actually know what happened outside of that 30 second clip. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, did you say, did you type that out while I was talking? God damn it. Uh, so in, in other games, people noticed that, uh, <laughs> people noticed that uh, Hong Kong Attitude, which is a League of Legends team, their name was not being said outright. Or it was, but it was kind of being stumbled and actually brought back and they were saying the acronym instead. Uh, they were saying the acronym HKA. This is not unusual. When you're a caster and you have a fucking team name that is like 27 syllables, you're probably going to try to find a way to abbreviate it down. And so when I saw these clips, and I'll play them for you right now. When I saw these clips... Have a shot, but it's good to see that Hong Kong uh, HKA as well as Splice were just able to we'll play it again. You know, have a shot, but it's good to see that Hong Kong uh, HKA as well as people are taking that as oh my god, these other casters were told that they can't say Hong Kong attitude because it has the word Hong Kong in it, and League of Legends is or sorry, Riot is 100% owned by Tencent, right? So it was weird that they did this Hong Kong uh, HKA. Here, I'll show you another example of it here. I think, like, I agree with you. Hong Kong, uh, HKA, rather, are a team that likes to fight for everything. Here's another um, one. Really, the Hong Kong, uh, the HKA group versus Isaris Gaming is also... It's just weird. It's just weird. It's, 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 it's strange, okay? Now, what I did was I went through one, two, three, four... I went through, like, a shitload of VODs this morning of previous times that Hong Kong Attitude has played in competition where they were being casted. And not once, not one fucking time did I, did I find an instance where they said Hong Kong, uh, uh, HKA. Not once. Here, here, I'm just gonna play these things I found. The way to the side, Featherstorm coming back up at Fnatic. They're looking to close this one out with no more tools left in the tank for Hong Kong Attitude. That's a double Hong Kong Attitude, but wait. Cutting through the Nexus turrets, and they will close this one out. Two and zero in this series. One game away from moving forward at Worlds 2017. And what more do HKA have left HKA. in the tank? They got Two separate instances. There's another one. Fnatic really wanted to leave this Jogab off the map, but it's bought just enough time for the rest of Hong Kong Attitude to come through. Hong Kong Attitude! Shut down mission looking Hong Kong Attitude! On his face, no doubt, as Fnatic looking for the final fight. Desperate finish here for Hong Kong Attitude, but it is one, two, three, the coup de grace! Hong Kong Fnatic. Attitude! Up again. They would be guaranteed to play another emerging region. Have to remember though, Hong Kong Attitude do have the momentum on the day. They beat Hong Kong Attitude earlier on. Very good AD carry support duo. A Syndra pick early on for the Hong Kong Attitude. And Callista still... ...pointed out the red side. This was Hong Kong Attitude's choice. They might have a plan up their sleeves to get the picks and bans. Why all of a sudden are they stuttering over the word? Like, why, why, why are they stumbling over the word? Now, there are some theories. The, ser the theories initially was that, oh, well, they're being told. Or right there. So yeah, they're clearly being told to not use the words. Um... Uh, I'm sorry, you moved so quickly there. Uh, not to use the words to please the Chinese government. That's what it, that's what it, that's what it seems like. That's what it seems like. It, it also, you know what it also seems like? If I'm, if I'm trying to be fair, if I'm trying to be fair here, it sounds like, yeah, exactly what Iris says. It sounds like they're fucking scared. They're fucking scared to even say Hong Kong. Either way, either way, it's shitty. Again, there's, I've not found any instances. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But I've not found any instances previously where they, uh, where they stumbled over Hong Kong attitude to go back and correct it to HKA. Uh, I did find a couple instances where like people like in the recent videos where other casters would kind of have like a weird look when someone said Hong Kong attitude because it was mentioned because somebody else like mentioned that, oh yeah, in the same body he says Hong Kong attitude and nobody says anything. But if you look at the other casters, you know, they have a look on their face kind of like, mm. but if it was 2017, maybe they pushed the abbreviation in their promotion. That's a fucking stretch right there. Uh, if anyone told them to avoid the word, they'd be pretty stupid. It's only going to draw more attention. Yes. So we don't know. We don't know uh, if they were told not to say it or if they are fucking scared to say it. Maybe internally, they were maybe amongst themselves. They were like, maybe it's a good idea to not say Hong Kong Attitude's name. And like I said, either way, either way, it's shitty. And uh, well, 
then there is a tweet today or a message here. This is from uh, John Needham, and he is the global head of League of Legends esports, and this is related to uh, to Worlds uh, that's going to be happening this week in the uh, group stage. Uh, he says that as, as a general and general rule, we want to keep our broadcasts focused on the game, the sport, and the players. We serve fans from many different countries and cultures, and we believe this opportunity comes with responsibility to keep personal views on sensitive issues, pol political, religious, or otherwise separate. These topics are often incredibly nuanced, require deep understanding and a willingness to listen, and cannot be fully rep fairly represented in the forum our broadcast provides. Therefore, we have, re we have reminded our casters and pro players to refrain from discussing any of these topics on air. So they have talked to their casters. They didn't maybe specifically say, don't say Hong Kong Attitude's whole name because that's really fucking specific, but I'm guessing Hong Kong Attitude is the only team with Hong Kong in their name. But they have discussed this with their uh, casters. Uh, can you imagine our Reddit did say that they didn't specifically uh, call for the casters analysis of what I mentioned? And it was a lack of communication. <laughs> I didn't see that. I didn't see that where they actually said that uh, uh, specifically they did say it, but yeah. It's not that they're saying the team name because it has a country and a sense of issue. Boy. Boy. What do you got here? Is this it? Oh no, hold on. Hold on. I gotta check it first. Uh, ah, here we go. It says, uh, oh, I think I did see this one. Let's see, an official statement to correct some confusion about how we talk about Hong Kong attitude in our sports broadcast. We want to correct some confusion that we are seeing regarding coverage of Hong Kong attitude. As you can see, oh yeah, I saw this one. Yeah, they say that uh, this is bullshit. <laughs> just, as you can see from our official LOL Esports Twitter account, we refer to their team interchangeably by both their full name and their tricode abbreviation, HKA, as we routinely do with all teams on our ecosystem. Yes, yes, you absolutely do. But there's no fucking instance of you stumbling over the word three quarters of the way through it to go back and say the acronym. I cannot find, please show me where you've done that one time, please, because I've watched too many fucking League of Legends, League of Legends vibes, I'm kind of over it. <sighs> uh, the next one in the thread is what I was referring to. Let me see, what is the next one? The next one is uh, to make this, I'll just read this one. Uh, to make this as explicit as possible, we aren't telling anyone to avoid saying Hong Kong. We'd rather this team be referred to by its full name. There's been some confusion internally about this as well. We're working to correct it. So, okay, so there's confusion. So they did have the discussion. And <laughs> some casters were scared. Again, this is this is the thing. It's like either they were told to do it or they're scared to say it. And either way, it's a shitty situation to be in. Uh, and so it says here that uh, uh, there's been some confusion internally about this as well, and we're working to correct it. So it's funny because uh, there was uh, there's an instance where um, Harden was an uh, NBA player was getting interviewed uh, during a press. There's like a press event that happened after a game or something, and somebody asked her uh, uh, um, a young lady reporter ask them about about their stance on China uh, and a couple other things related to that and she had the mic taken away they had actually came and took the mic away from her and they wouldn't let uh, uh, they would not let uh, James Harden or anybody else answer the question for her later uh, I think like the next day or later that day uh, the NBA issued an apology of sorts which seems to be the the going trend here it's like well let me go ahead and censor you real quick and then come back later and say, you know what? Hey, that was a mistake. That was, that was, uh, uh, that was, that's not the way we want to run business here. Right? I know this sounds tinfoil hat and all that shit, but it, I'm just pointing out that it has been happening a lot lately. <laughs> Let's go ahead and perform the action and then later apologize for it. Uh, so whatever, whatever happened with how they want to handle saying or not saying the word Hong Kong during their broadcast as a caster, when the team's name has the word Hong Kong in it, uh, it doesn't seem like there's really any good ex excuse or explanation or any, there's any, any feel good excuse for it. Like no one's going to say, oh, it's just an honest mistake. Oh, okay. We just kind of fucked up, whatever, you know, um, they're either scared or they're told not to one of the two, uh, HKA's post game interview is re pre-recorded. They wouldn't do a live interview. That's okay. So from what I understand, Cloud Watcher, that is something that, uh, that does happen often. I don't know how often. Uh, and I, I did, unfortunately, I did not have an opportunity to go through and, uh, uh, and watch countless interviews to, to try to figure it out which one, you know, was, was pre-recorded or not. But yeah, I have heard that they are, are pre-recorded. Uh, probably, probably, probably will always happen now. <laughs> probably every, every damn, uh, uh post-game interview is probably going to be pre-recorded. So, I... Uh, so we're kind of near towards the end of this fiasco, but well, not really the end, just kind of where we're at now. 
Uh, Blizzard makes a statement um, on their on Chinese social media called uh, Weibo. Weibo. W e i b o. You can actually it's it's like a, it's it's like Twitter. It's basically Twitter for uh, 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 that's that's run by China. Uh, they put they put a statement out there, and the statement was slightly contradictory of itself, and also Weibo. Thank you so much. Um, and also not in line with what was said here in the States. Uh, so here is the, uh, here's the actual uh, uh, post and here is the, the translation. Uh, and again, this was Blizzard's official statement to, uh, to the Chinese uh, people. It says, we express our strong indignation or resentment and con 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 condemnation of the events that occurred at the Hearthstone Asia Pacific competition last weekend and absolutely oppose the dissemination of personal political ideas during any events or games. Uh, the players involved will be banned and the commentators involved will be immediately terminated from any official business. Also, we will protect or safeguard our national dignity or honor. Uh, so this is a, a bl official blizzard statement basically saying they're going to, um, uh, defend China's honor. <laughs> they, they don't, it, what does it say specifically? It says, uh, uh, they, they oppose the dissemination of personal political ideas, but we also, we will protect or safeguard our national dignity. It just seems a little contradictory of itself there. And it says, is that Blizzard or NetEase? Blizzard is an American company. It's an American-based company. They have, they have arms of the company in various countries, but Blizzard is still an American company. So if it's, if it's a statement that's put out on Blizzard's behalf, then it's from Blizzard. Exactly. Still repping, Bl still repping Blizz. Uh, oh. so yeah, it's just been, this is where we're at right now. Blizzard has said that, uh, today, as a matter of fact, they are still assessing the situation and they will, you know, they haven't said they're going to make a statement. They're saying they're still assessing the situation. So we don't know what or when they're going to, what they're going to say, when they're going to say it, but we do know that people everywhere is uh are are pretty much aware of what's going on here and if you're not aware hopefully you've learned a lot today uh, uh good thing you said never violates human rights oh i know what about what about these guys uh they're ducking and covering on hopes that that, that the winds are changing yeah uh from my own crazy experience running esports tourneys over here real quick uh in taiwan net east has been putting the hammer down on even taiwanese self-representation mm. yeah uh, the internet, so there's a new Vice article, it says the internet internal silence, uh, is deafening, Blizzard Employee says about China controversy. I think the title pretty much says everything there, the internal silence is deafening, uh, Blizzard Employee says about China controversy. Blizzard Employee, they're reeling over the week's controversy and protests. Um, now, I, I, I don't have any statements from uh, any secret Blizzard sources or anything, because if I did, you guys would all immediately assume it was fucking Josh, and then he might get in trouble for it, even if he didn't fucking say anything, even though I have other friends that work for Blizzard, thank you guys! But no, I don't have any official statements or unofficial uh, uh, under the table s statements from anybody who works with Blizzard. But we at least, uh, so it's Mike, it's Mike, see, see, so it's Mike Schaffner, so it's Mike Schaffner. <laughs> I have more friends. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, so there's, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack when it comes to China and what they're, what they're doing economically, uh, how they're utilizing the market to grow their economy, uh, which is, you know, that's, we're, we're trying to do the same thing here in the States. Um, the thing is, the way they're trying to, wait, wait first off, wait, like the two opium wars, the signing unequal treaties, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, there's a lot, there's a lot to unpack, Shu. Uh, and I highly recommend you go and watch more detailed videos that go over what's going on in China outside of the games industry stuff because you'll, you'll get a better understanding of like why there's so much conflict and maybe why you should give a shit, right? Because I, I do feel like there's a lot of folks who don't really know why they should care. Uh, and again, I'm not here to tell you where to place your morals, but I would at least hope that you would at least educate yourself so that when you do decide to, 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 uh, to prioritize your morals wherever you do, uh, you, you at least have that information on hand so you could do it that way. Um, like I said at the beginning, basic human rights should be non-negotiable for any America-based company. Uh, Blizzard made, made this decision 
and they took it over the top. Again, I have not found a single instance of a ban being carried over a fucking year for a competitive player like this, where they lose the money, they, and o- over this, over something like this. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of instances that, that have happened like this, but the closest I can find is somebody stream sniping, cheating, basically. And even that leveraged a, a ban of just that one single tournament. So it's a lot. It's a lot. For me personally, I would like, I wouldn't, you know what, if, if they said Blitz Chunk can compete, but he loses that prize money and he's, in, and he's technically DQ'd from that specific tournament, then I think that's fine. Like, because it is written the rules, whether or not it's, it's law, it's binding or not, uh, that's something that's still up in the air, um, that he will lose his money and he will lose his, he'd be disqualified. Uh, or he can be disqualified based off, it's, again, it's Blizzard's, Blizzard's discretion. But the ban, there's nowhere, nowhere in the rules that I could find where they said that they will ban somebody for an extended period of time. So this is new. Like I said at the beginning, China is, uh, is using American companies to learn how these industries work so that way they can copy them, control them up and down. Right? It's already happening with endless cases of IP theft. Just go Google IP theft China. You can find countless, countless uh, articles about it. Um, and once they do that, they'll have no use for these companies. They'll have no use for these companies anymore. Like, why? Why would they do it? Their movies are already, like, really, really fucking high budget and crazy. Uh, I actually watched, uh, was it Wolf, uh, fuck, Wolf Mother 2 or something like that? Or Grey Wolf 2, White Wolf, White Wolf 2 or something? White Wolf 2, I think is what it's called? Uh, it's basically, like, Chinese Mission Impossible, and it looks absolutely insane. So, like, they, they don't need us. Once they learn, uh, once, they, once they basically you know, get the industry down, they're just going to ditch us. And C-level guys at Blizzard absolutely know that this is what's happening, and they're still willing to throw you guys under the bus uh, to look good for their short-term cash cow, because this is not going to, this is a long-term endeavor for them, for anybody that has business in, uh, uh, that's not a Chinese-based company that's doing business with China. Uh, China, contrary to what some people are saying, I don't believe that China uh, made Blizzard do anything. They have a 5% stake. Well, not they, but the Tencent has a 5% stake in Blizzard. All right? I don't think that China made Blizzard do anything. I think Blizzard did it because of their fear of offending China. They chose to do it. They chose to, to, to take these actions like a bunch of bitches. <laughs> like, they fucking chose to do this. And, and that's, the reason why, that's the reason why I'm upset. Uh, Blizzard absolutely did all of this to save their money. Yeah, that's what it, that's exactly what it is. Blizzard isn't willing to risk potential money they'd lose. I strongly suspect that some NetEase guys saw it, freaked out, and pulled a power move. Yes. So, that is very, very possible that somebody made a, somebody made a call and they, uh, uh, and perhaps it was something they should have dwelled on just a little bit longer. The post on the front page of Hearthstone, uh, Hearthstone, Hearthstone's blog was, uh, uh, was a bit much. So somebody made that call as well. It sounds like it's a, it's, if, if it started off as somebody making a bad call, it's just, why do they keep doubling and tripling down? Double, triple, it's just, just constantly do it. Like at some point here, they have to figure out when, which is probably one of the reasons why they're quiet, because now they have to figure out how to undo some of this. Uh, or they just want to wait for it to blow over. I seriously, I honestly, I honestly doubt that they're going to wait for this to blow over. I, I truly believe that we're going to get a statement from Blizzard before BlizzCon. Before BlizzCon. Before BlizzCon. Before BlizzCon. Before BlizzCon. As expected, we got an update. I figured they would say something before BlizzCon, but uh, I didn't feel, feel like they'd say something immediately following the broadcast that we did today. So I'm going to tag this on to the end of the news video, or somewhere towards the end of the news video, so that way we can keep all this, con- so we keep continuity uh, in check. So, they have uh, uh, put out a statement, Blizzard has, regarding last week's Hearthstone Grandmaster Tournament. I'll read some of this for you guys. It says, hello, Blizzard community. Now, we're not streaming this because it is after hours, so you're going to have some blank space here, and I'm sorry. Uh, but it says, hello, Blizzard community. I want to take a few minutes to talk to all of you. This is Jalen Brack talking, by the way. Uh, to talk to all of you about Hearthstone Grandmaster Tournament this past weekend. On Monday, we made the decision to take action against a player named Blitz, Ch- Blitz Chung and two shoutcasters after the player shared his views on what's happening in Hong Kong on our official broadcast channel. At Blizzard, our vision is to bring the world together through epic entertainment. And we have core values that apply here. Think globally, lead responsibly. And importantly, every voice matters, uh, encouraging everybody to share their point of view. The actions that we took 
uh, over the weekend are causing people to question if we are still committed to these values, and we absolutely are, and I will explain. Our esports programs are an expression of our vision and our values. Esports exist to create opportunities for players from around the world, from different cultures, and from different backgrounds to come together to complete and share the compete and share their passion for gaming. It is extremely important for us to protect these channels and the purpose they serve to bring the world together through epic entertainment, to celebrate our players, and build diverse and inclusive communities. As for how these apply, how these those values apply in this case, uh, it says we interview compared predators who are at the top. Sorry, let me stop for a second. Uh, we interview competitors who are at the top of their craft to share how they feel. Talk about the 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 actual interview that Blitzchung did at the end. And it said Blitzchung Blitzchung used this segment to make a statement about the situation in Hong Kong in violation of rules he acknowledged and understood. And this is why we took action. Every voice matters, and we strongly encourage everyone in our community to share the viewpoints of, uh, in the many places available to express themselves. Don't forget Dallas, the Dallas uh, uh, Fuel. Uh, co assistant coach had to remove a tweet. He was forced to remove the tweet. We don't know by who, but we can assume who it is. Uh, it says, second, what's the, what role, what is the role the shoutcasters have in the broadcast? It says, we hire shoutcasters to amplify the excitement of the game. They elevate the watchability and help esports viewing experience stay focused on the tournament and our amazing players. And it says, uh, where our actions is based on the content of the message. It says, part of thinking globally, leading responsibly, and what every voice matters is recognizing that we have players and fans in almost every country in the world. Our goal is to help players connect to areas of commonality, like their passion for our games, and create a sense of shared community. The specific views expressed by Blitzchung were not a factor in the decision we made. I want to be clear, our relationships with, in China had no influence on our decision. We have these rules to keep the focus of, on the game and on the tournament to the, to the benefit of a global audience, and that was the only consideration in the actions that we took. So, I can't help but to smirk during that part, because... I'll be honest, I don't, I don't fully believe him, right? I just, I don't. And I'm sure some of you guys don't as well. Uh, I just don't believe that 100% this had nothing to do with it. Based off of what we just talked about today with all the different, with, with the other instances where they've banned people uh, on Hearthstone, which is only a single tournament ban, uh, and also by their own player guide, which says that uh, you get four infractions per tournament before you are uh, banned. And you won't even get a ban beyond that unless, unless, of course, it's open-ended saying that, unless Blizzard chooses to. So again, in this, ca in case, in this case, Blizzard chose to extend that ban, something they have not done to a previous esports player, as far as I can tell. Uh, so it says, uh, uh, let's see, what could we have done better? Where do we go from here? Over the past few days, many players, cast esports fans, and employees uh, have expressed concerns about how we determine our, our penalties, and we've had a chance to pause, listen to the community, community, and to reflect on what we could have done diff done better. In hindsight, our process wasn't adequate, and we reacted too quickly. <laughs> we want to ensure that we maintain a safe and inclusive environment for all of our players, and that our rules and processes are clear. All of this is in service of, uh, of another important Blizzard value, play nice, play fair. In the tournament itself, Blitz played fair. Uh, we now believe he should receive his prizing. We understand that for some, this is not about the prize, and perhaps for others, it is disrespectful to even discuss it. That is not our intention. Personally, pay the man. I do feel like he did earn it. Uh, I don't feel like it's a Yeah, I feel like he earned it. Yes, pay him. Good. Um, it does say in the rules, technically, that it, he should be getting zero dollars. So, I mean, we also know that uh, that was legally up in the air. So, hmm goodness of their heart or did they think oh you know what it's gonna be very difficult to actually uphold this uh, in court so maybe we we'll just give them the money uh it doesn't make sense to give them the money overall though he did technically win the tournament uh but playing fair also includes appropriate pre and post match conduct especially when a player accepts recognition for winning in a broadcast when we think about the suspension six months for blitz chung seems is more appropriate after which time he can compete in the hearthstone pro circuit again if he chooses again this is the harshest sentence they've given to a professional player that I've seen. Um, and uh, <laughs> so, professional Hearthstone player, I made that clear. I didn't go digging through uh, 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 WoW Arena or StarCraft, so I don't really know about those guys. Uh, it says, there is, a, uh, there is a consequence for taking a conversation away from, a purpose, from the purpose of the event and disrupting or derailing the broadcast. Fair. This part is fair. They, they, he, they, this definitely derailed the whole show <laughs> for certain. Uh, it definitely did. Uh, it was the actions that, uh, that I believe a lot of people had issues with, myself included. Um, uh, see, with regarding to the casters, remember the purpose is to keep the event focused on the tournament. That didn't happen here, and we 
are setting the suspension to six months as well. Uh, I think that's unfair, personally. Uh, I don't believe that the casters, and this is, again, I, this, I don't have the full VOD. Nobody does. Um, so unless you watch a tournament, you don't, or if you were there, you really don't know what the relationship was between the casters and the, uh, and, and Blitz. Uh, there's lots of assumptions. If you have an opinion on what you think happened outside of it, that's not a fact. That's an opinion. That's an assumption. You assume. Uh, we know that he knew that there were eight words that were going to be spoken. Given the proximity to Hong Kong, he probably knew what those eight words were. <laughs> because it is literally the fucking slogan uh, for the protesters. So, and he was wearing a mask, so they probably knew. Also, should know again, I already mentioned this earlier today, I believe, uh, th the uh, producers who were on there, uh, who, who were behind the scenes, would have seen him as well and known ahead of time if uh, that this person was probably going to say something. Now, if unless all the producers behind the scene are American who had no idea what, the, what was going on in Hong Kong, which I highly, highly, highly doubt, uh, then somebody behind the scenes knew what was going to happen and sent it through anyways, and they, they managed to get out, out of this scot-free. The casters don't run the production side of things. So for me, personally, the casters should be reinstated immediately. It's not going to happen. It's going to be six months. Um... It says, moving forward, we will continue to apply tournament rules to ensure our official broadcasts remain focused on the game and are not a platform for divisive social or political views. So they're going to just update the rules a little bit. So <laughs> one of our goals at Blizzard is to make sure that every player everywhere in the world, regardless of political views, religious beliefs, race, gender, or any other consideration, always feels safe and welcome both competing and, and playing in playing our games. At Blizzard, we are always listening and finding ways to improve. It is part of our culture. Thank you for your patience with us as we continue to learn. Sincerely, J. Allen Brack, president of Blizzard Entertainment. Ah, <sighs> so, uh, yeah, it's 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 easier to ask for forgiveness. It's a lot easier to ask for forgiveness. Uh, I've already stated on my personal Twitter that um, uh, six in six months, I will reevaluate reevaluate whether I want Blizzard to have access to my wallet. Um, which means, you know, resubscribing to World of Warcraft, because that was the only money they were really taking from me, uh, what was through that. Um, so I'll reevaluate whether or not, uh, I, I will go ahead and get back into World of Warcraft, or just basically, you know, spending any money with them, period. Yeah, they may have another game that's gonna come out, right? If Diablo if 4 is coming out in six months, I'll see if it's something I want to get into, right? Uh, I'm putting them basically on the same probation that I'm, that the, they're putting the, the players on. Uh, but in my case, I want to make sure that they... They uphold these these values, uh, and they also respect other uh, other players, uh, all other employees and players' personal opinions on political matters when expressed outside of uh, of a sponsored event of, of a Blizzard uh, you know sanctioned event. I think that's fair. Uh, we do know that again, like I said, the uh, the assistant coach Jane of uh, of Dallas Fuel that he was told that he had to remove a tweet. I don't know who told him that, but if I hear about this bullshit again then maybe we just restart the timer and go from there. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Uh, again, I, I, I do want to put, if, if I'm going to ban something, I want to put some kind of like, some kind of rules on it. So that way I know when it's okay to go back, right? I just don't want to say forever I'm never going to do this. Uh, I, like, I, like I think I mentioned earlier, the Epic Game Store. It's like, I'm not going to say I'm never going to do it. I'm going to say when they feature match and they stop being dicks, then that's, then that's when I'll, uh, I'll consider using their platform. But until then, so that's where they're at with this. Uh, you know, there, there's a whole lot more to be said about just the tone of it. It doesn't feel so much like an apology, uh, so much as it's, as it's just, well, you know, why don't we just make it six months and then maybe people will be okay with that, right? I understand why they're doing it for Blitz. Six months sucks, but he gets his money. Uh, and there's only like, you know, a handful of tournaments that he'd miss out on in the next six months anyways. So it's not terribly a, a terribly big deal. Um, I do wonder if he's going to actually return uh, to uh, to play, or if there's going to be some reason why he technically can't participate or something. So again, these are all these are all stipulations that I'm adding for myself uh, to check back on in six months. Uh, the casters, like I said, uh, I do feel like they got the shit end of the stick, and I don't feel like it's totally fair. There's definitely producers there. They're not the ones running the cameras. Somebody else saw that there was somebody there with a fucking mask. So surely. Somebody else knew better than to put it through. And they did. Cass was put in a weird spot. They already know what he's going to say. Say your eight words. They said the eight words. And go. A lot of this is assumption. Right? Based off of the 30 second clip that we saw. Uh, your interpretation may differ. But that's where I stand on it. And that's it. So I'll go and actually wrap the show here. Thank you so much. 
for watching. Uh, I wanted to sit down and record this really quickly to add to the end, so that way we have uh, we have a good uh, basically wrap to this. And it's not a wrap because obviously we still have to keep an eye on Blizzard and hold them accountable for their actions. Uh, I still want to I still want to make sure that we spread the word about what's going on in Hong Kong. I do think that what's going on there is it's it's an injustice uh, with what China is doing with Hong Kong. And also just just to make people aware, hopefully I'm helping make people aware that uh, that you know your 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 gaming experience right could be impacted negatively because somebody's trying to appeal to a foreign entity that has you know restrictions on the way that they do content, and that's. I mean, that's not, that's, eh, it's, it's kind of bullshit. So that's it. My name is Mike B. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are the best. Sorry, chat couldn't be here, but just pretend that they're here. There we go. Definitely come say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later. Hit that number four. Number four. No, that's seven. Four. <laughs> ah, there we go. Thank you. So can I have this, my switch? Yes, you may. That's all he cares about.